Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman. I am your GPR professor from LearnGPR.com and I'm here in our new little studio today uh, rattling off some videos for our subscribers. So in today's video, it was a question that we got from a YouTube subscriber uh, who asked about deconvolution filters. Okay, they want to know what a deconvolution filter is, what it does, how does it work, when should you use it? Uh, so I'm going to give a very brief overview of what a deconvolution filter is and when it's really used. All right, so here's, here's what happens. There's a number of reasons why you can see multiples or ringing in your data set. And these multiples or ringing can obstruct your ability to interpret uh, what's going on um, or can just, you know, produce a noisy looking data profile that may not be what you want to present to your client, right, or customer, um, or whoever you're presenting to. So here's how it happens, right, is number one, right, that's your ground surface. Here is your uh, GPR antenna. Um, and a couple things happen. Number one, let's say you have, you know, a metal spike or nail or something like that below the surface, the signal comes out, you know, of your GPR, hits this uh, metal, and this metal basically becomes like a GPR antenna. It starts producing its own signal, and it goes up to your GPR over and over and over again, uh, inundating the GPR with signal. So what happens is when it actually records the profile, it will record... a hyperbola, you know, or something like that, if it's large enough, and then a bunch of ringing noises, which could also be hyperbola, after it, okay? So, many of you probably have seen something like this. It could happen if you go over a manhole cover. Here's your manhole cover, you go over it, and you just get a ringing all the way down, uh, basically obstructing the entire view. So what happens when you get this ringing from, you know, our little spike or from a manhole cover? Is it basically destroys everything below it and it just creates a data set that has convoluted that's you know where it comes from it's basically a convoluted data set this is one reason why you get multiples all right um another reason you can get multiples is let's say you have a non-metallic pipe and it's filled with water your signal comes in and hits it comes back um, but it also goes through it hits it can come back and so you can get you know multiple uh, hyperbola in this case as well. And this could also happen, could go down multiple times, okay? So this could happen. That's another reason why you might get multiples. Okay, another reason um, which you could get multiples is, you know, you get a, uh, here's another a layer. All right, so here's your layer. This is the asphalt layer. And uh, it, your signal comes out, hits, comes back up, comes back down, comes back up. And it gets trapped in this layer. And that creates right, multiples of the same layer over and over again. So why am I telling you all of this? This could be its own video by itself. But why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you this because with all these multiples, there's a way to remove them. And that way is called the deconvolution filter. So basically what the deconvolution filter does is it takes this hyperbola from our nail, just as an example, and has all these other, you know, hyperbolas below it, basically over and over and over again, this, what we call ringing, okay? And when you apply a deconvolution filter to the data set that has this in it, it compresses the signal, okay? It compresses the signal. And so by compressing... The signal, probably two S's in here, maybe not. I was never a good speller. I lost the competition every time. Um, so it compresses the signal. What happens is now in your data set, this all gets squished up into this one hyperbola. And that is what you're left with. And so you have a much cleaner, much nicer data set to look at. Uh, another reason that you can get these multiples is 
is just uh, internal noise from, from your system. You probably see this all the time. And sometimes that could be removed with a background filter, which we have in some other videos. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description, but just check out our, our channel and look for those. Uh, but another way is possibly using a deconvolution filter. But that's what deconvolution does, right? It uh, uh, compresses the signal uh, um, when you have ringing or multiples within your data set. So it cleans it up. But here's your word of caution. All right, and I'll put this in red. All right, is you can remove important information. Okay, you can remove important information from your data. Okay? A caution. You can remove important information from your data. Why is that the case? Because if you remove the ringing, the ringing could be an indication that something is metal. And if that's important for you, you could be removing, look, we always say GPR records contrast, not composition. However, there are subtle responses that you can use to limit the possibilities. And ringing is one of those. You get ringing over and over and over again. Okay, it's quite a good possibility that this right here, that's metal. So if you remove this out from there, now what happens? Uh, it's just another hyperbola and maybe it's metal, maybe it's something completely different. So be careful, that's a caution, that you can remove important information. Um, it may be worthwhile because you don't care. Here's an example. Maybe you were looking for this metal and that's why it's a bad idea. But let's say that you're just uh, pushing your GPR along and you know there's some modern trash right on the ground surface. Okay, so here's now you know some metal trash on the ground surface and you move this GPR you push it this way over the trash. Now what happens? You can get a ringing signal all the way down through your profile. In this case, you're not interested in interpreting modern trash, and all it's doing is, uh, um, you know, is, is is producing noise within your profile. So, using a deconvolution filter in this case, you know, could be worthwhile. All right. Removing that in this case could be worthwhile, so you get all that information out, while removing it in this case uh, may be detrimental, because this might be you know something that you're looking for. For example, um, you know a metal metal really would not be the grave, would be a metal coffin, okay? Uh, it's terrible spelling, nonetheless. A metal coffin. I know it's wrong. But a metal coffin, okay, it could be a metal coffin, and that might be something you want to leave in there because you could have another, a totally different coffin that's, you know, made out of wood, All right? So now we have metal. This one is wood. This is important information that you would not want to remove from your data set because it's giving you additional uh, uh, insight into what's going on below the ground surface. So that's what a deconvolution filter does. It compresses the signal and can remove this ringing within your data set or multiples within your data set and uh, uh, should be used or can be used to help you know, create a, a or, you know, clear up your data profiles, but you should use it with caution as it can remove important information. So I hope that this was helpful. If you liked the video and you found out that you know something that you didn't know beforehand, then please you know, share this around with somebody that might uh, find it useful as well. And subscribe to the channel. Go over to learngpr.com, put your name and email address in, and we will send you videos like this to your inbox uh, every single week. And, um, and put in the comments below if you've ever used deconvolution filter before, and give me an example of when you've used it. Okay? Don't be you know, somebody who's just waiting out in the sidelines, just watching my videos. Go into the comments and... Be part of the community. All right. Tell us all when you use deconvolution filter. And if you've never used it, say in the comments, I've never used it before. Um, and now this is a way that you might be able to go and play around with it. We didn't go into how to evaluate, you know, uh, what numbers you should put in 
to it, but at least you understand what it, what it actually is now. So thank you again. Subscribe to the channel, and we will see you on the next video.